Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, this new Google Hangout session, um, specifically on um, tourism and events. So the topic that I have uh, prepared today is uh, an education in tourism and events management, uh, which is uh, focusing on enhancing learning through competition. Um, among us, actually, um, we have a few experts here. Um, can I just take the opportunity to introduce them? Um, they are uh, Mr. Cheng Choban, who is also one of our team member. Um, Mr. Aaron Pang, and also uh, some of our graduates who is uh, now uh, working in Singapore, Miss Jolene So. Uh, who has joined us all the way from Singapore, actually. Um, and she has joined a lot of our competition. Um, we also have, of course, Ezran and also uh, Gawei. Um, and a current student with us, Winston. Um, so hopefully we um, have this session, um, let it be more interactive um, to throw in your question. Um, and hopefully we can learn something from each other. So um, the topic today, um, I'm basically talking about learning beyond um, your usual curriculum because um, although the curriculum that we design for tourism and events um, is very comprehensive, um, it's very technical, but we feel that students don't really have the opportunity to uh, practice what they learn. So competition is actually a very good platform for a student to actually test out their skills, uh, widen their knowledge, and also um, a major benefit is actually expand their networking. Um, the scope of the competition actually goes very far. Um, it's um, how much you want to um, uh, learn from the competition is of course depends on individual student um, but really from what we can see from experience uh, the student um, actually really develop and grow a lot from a very innocent um, curious individual to at the end of the competition become very very confident and uh, able to see the linkage um, in the industry and um, how the industry how they can benefit or um, some even found passion uh, working in you know they, they really realize their passion that working in the industry now um before i go on um you may ask, what are the competitions that um, students can participate uh, when they are studying, you know, at uh, Brajaya University College? So there are actually not that many competition in events and tourism, unlike um, other fields such as uh, culinary and uh, hospitality. But they, but but we do have a, a bit of them. Uh, mainly, um, we have the Business and Major Event Challenge, um, and that is organized by our uh, professional uh, association uh, together with the Malaysian Convention and Exhibition Bureau. That is a yearly affair, and that is open to all local universities um, in Malaysia. So uh, next, if you or your team um, get to win that competition, you will then get to move on to the next level to represent Malaysia in the Asia Federation of Exhibition and Convention Association, or in short, we call it AFRICA. Um, and the competition is called AFRICA Asia Mice Youth Challenge. That is also a yearly competition. And uh, normally is at the end of the year, and um, each uh, member association will take turns to host the competition. So last year, uh, the competition was actually held in the Philippines. 
and um, our team uh, was led by Mr. Aaron Pang to go over there. Later on, I'll tell you a little bit of, um, more about the results. But the competition which we have the most um, success is the Taiwan Mice Destination Marketing Competition, uh, which we have been participating for uh, roughly um, seven, eight years now. And that is uh, organized by uh, Taiwan uh, Bureau, which is uh, called TITRA. So these are all the competition uh, that if a student is willing uh, and want to learn, uh, we will help them to uh, sharpen their skills, uh, uh, you know, and train them uh, to join the competition. So, um, sorry. Um, any questions so far? Mm. Any input from the audience that is in there? No, okay, all right. Now, okay, what are the um, skills that the students, um, you know, can uh, learn from joining this competition? So basically, um, one of the skills that we see the student can join uh, uh, by joining, uh, one of the skills that the student um, learn is uh, ownership of learning. Um, they go beyond um, what they learn from the classroom and to really take responsibility of, uh, of how to actually do better in the competition. Now, the competition is mainly, of course, uh, looking into product or technical skills. So the student really have to do a lot of research and to dig very, very deep into uh, the product knowledge. Um, specifically um, in um, destination. Um, so a, a lot of the, our competition is mainly talking about destination. So they will have to do um, very, very intensive, extensive uh, research on the chosen destination. Um, so I can give you some example. Um, uh, for example, last year we choose um, Langkawi. Um, as uh, our um, destination to compete in the uh, Taiwan Mice uh, competition. Um, so Malaysia is actually quite blessed in the sense that we have 13 states to choose from. So we are basically quite spoiled for choice uh, compared to other countries. Uh, but um, to come to... to um, come to a decision on why Langkawi, uh, that actually took the team roughly about three weeks to decide. Um, so that three weeks was, uh, again, uh, students have to do a lot of research as to determine uh, which destination that we want to go in uh, to, to be showcased uh, in the regional competition and um, to see whether that destination suits uh, the case study that has been given. So after three weeks of uh, debating, discussion, um, brainstorming, um, then you know, uh, we decided on Nankawi. Um, but sometimes the decision on the destination could be very, um, very quick, um, like Sabah. Um, um, that was like, um, that was in 2018. Uh, that to, to use Sabah as a destination was a very clear cut decision because they were building a convention center and, and they're positioning themselves as a, um, as a uh, preferred mice destination, a new uh, mice destination for Malaysia. So, um, that was an easy choice for us in 2018, but 2019 was uh, quite a tough one because um, it, uh, we were not sure as to whether Langkawi was a good choice for us. But now on the hindsight, of course, we now we can see that you know Langkawi has a lot of benefits, attributes that really make it a very uh, interesting and uh, good 
uh, my destination. So um, once uh, the once we actually decide on uh, the destination itself, uh, then uh, the team really has to do a lot of digging, a lot of um, uh, work as to uh, what are the uh, accommodation, transportation, attractions, uh, um, uh, meeting venues that is required or suitable uh, to make the destination interesting. Okay, uh, so because the student has to juggle um, be between their normal uh, schedule, class schedule, and the competition. So really, they need to take ownership of their own learning. Um, we do have very regular uh, meetings when it comes to uh, the competition, but um, students really need to take the initiative, the effort, and be really motivated uh, to try to dig more and more information and come back to the table when we have the meeting and a lot of intensive um, discussion with the lecturers uh, who then by then the lecturers are actually more of uh, a coaches um, rather than lecturers uh, because not every one of us know the destination that well uh, only that after you do the competition then then you realize that oh you know my knowledge uh, of Langkawi also increase or your knowledge on certain aspects of the uh, uh, different area of the of the industry increase uh, just like for example another example I could give to you is uh, the team that um, went to Africa and um, the topic that we selected was uh, future food um, I can you know some of them are here with us um, I'm sure they will uh, agree with me. Uh, at the beginning of the competition, they, they actually really know nothing about future food. Um, but by the end of the competition, um, they can really argue their case out as to what future food is and how good they are, you know, and that. So that kind of knowledge, we could never force the student um, to um, accumulate in class or even just doing assignment. So competition has his advantage where the students are more willing to push themselves to do much better, um, where you know it brings out the competitive competitiveness in them and they are more willing to sacrifice um, then just an assignment. Somehow an assignment, yes, they want to get their A's or good grades. Um, but they kind of like, I know where I can just do enough. Um, but in a competition, we, we don't know, you see. Um, you can never be complacent. Um, even though um, when 2019, last year, we were the three times... Uh, consecutive uh, overall champion for mice, uh, for the Taiwan mice competition. But even then, we know that um, there may be newcomers that coming into the competition that could be very strong. So we have to always challenge ourselves, always do better, always innovate uh, to make sure that, you know, we grab back the title. Um, so that was that is actually one of I see the benefits of students joining and they are really they are, they are learning um, increase developed a lot through the competition and from there of course they sharpen their technical knowledge right um, and not just technical knowledge um, in in this sense of the competition um, most of the competition will be focusing on the bidding. Uh, in our industry, it's called bidding. Uh, other industry may call pitching. Uh, so the the choice of words, the style of presentation, um, the design of the PowerPoint, all these are various aspects that are important for you to win a job. So these are something that the student will also learn a lot um, in the competition through the competition. Uh, apart from that, they learn a lot of soft, soft skills as well, um, like communication, um, um, this problem solving as well, 
um, marketing skills, critical thinking, um, and especially creativity. Um, you need to be really creative, um, especially in Taiwan Mice competition, where we actually has to design and produce a booth and bring all the everything, uh, all the material over to Taiwan, set it up and, you know, uh, to compete. So that, that was not easy uh, because um, we have other uh, universities there uh, with a lot of manpower uh, because, you know, some of the local universities are also competing and uh, some of um in and there are always universities with a lot of resources uh but you know it doesn't mean that uh with a lot of resources or a lot of manpower um that you know you could win um there's also the element of creativity or or innovation uh that we need to put in to uh, impress the judges to to win you know um to 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 make sure that we show the judges that uh, our what we are what we are displaying um, is in line with the entire team that we are trying to portray. Um, the other thing that the student will learn is, of course, is uh, teamwork. All right. Um, most of our competition is team based, although uh, some competition uh, do give individual award. Um, just like in Afika, um, Diban, who is with us today as well, uh, now in this session, uh, he um, actually won our Best Presenter Award in the um, Afika competition. But it is essentially a team-based competition. So our um, industry, um, because the nature of our industry is um, we can't, uh, we're not encouraged and we don't really work alone, uh, we work as a team, uh, so naturally our competition is always team-based, um, which is very good for students uh, because they will learn to communicate in a group. Uh, they will learn how to motivate each other in a group. Um, they will learn um, negotiation skills. Um, they 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 will learn you know from their peers because. Um, all of us have different personalities and, you know, uh, weirdness maybe. Uh, so all of us have to actually try to juggle uh, with all the different personalities in order to make it work. But essentially, we have to ensure that, you know, the whole team only has one goal and that is to win, okay? Um, it, you have to have that in mind uh, in order for the whole team to be able to work together and move in the right direction. Otherwise, uh, you know, the whole team will go everywhere and, and you probably will not, you know, uh, um, get anything. Um, other than that, it is, um, I could say, is uh, stress management um, because competition is, as such is, um, is time-based, isn't it? Um, you can you know you cannot have a competition that is not within a time limit uh, so for mice uh, taiwan mice competition uh, the case study will come to us around about say may um, and we have roughly about uh, four months to get ready everything uh, to then around about september uh, to move the whole team over uh, to taiwan for a competition um, so it may sound like four months is a lot, but in actual sense, with all their, you know, uh, normal classes going on, their exam, their assignment, you know, plus the competition, um, is actually a, not a lot of time. Uh, where else, uh, for the Africa, I think um, the time is even shorter. It's probably about... Uh, three months roughly, um, correct me if I'm wrong, to actually uh, get ready uh, everything. But of course, Africa is without um, the production of the booth, so it's only on the proposal. But still, in terms of uh, you know time to do the uh, presentation, get ready the presentation script, 
the proposal, for the student to practice, um, and for the Taiwan mice to come up with a design of the booth, to produce the booth, and all the other elements in it, um, the time is actually uh, quite tight. Okay, but that teach the students how to cope with the pressure, um, and that is something again um, in class is actually uh, not impossible but difficult uh, because you know uh, they know they they can pass up assignment, you know, uh, and that will be it. But in a competition, uh, everything must be perfect. Everything must be, you know, as how we plan or design. Um, very little room of error uh, can be tolerated. So um, I think that part, you know, uh, make the student a lot more resilient. Um, you know, they, they actually have a very strong mindset. Um, and that's such a wonderful thing to see, you know. Um, of course, you know, um, students also learn leadership. Um, some students anyway, because uh, each team will be led by a leader. Um, and the bigger team like MICE, uh, Taiwan MICE competition will have sub leader, you know, or assistant uh, leaders. Um, and each one of them are um, have the responsibility of certain aspects uh, of the competition. Some will be maybe in charge of the booth production, another one in charge of just the proposal, another one will be in charge of um, the design of the material. You know. So um, each of the leader must make sure their part or their members understand what is going on, understand the whole concept. Uh, before then, the whole thing then can gel and move back in together. Um, so in any part, you know, or any of the team uh, does not function as a whole or doesn't doesn't function, you know, uh, it's almost like a clockwork, okay? If any of the wheels doesn't move, the whole thing will get jammed up and um, it will delay your system, right? Um, and and it will be very difficult uh, to actually put up a good show, right? Um, I have to say that the judges in Taiwan are always very impressed with our booth um, production. Um, and they are always very amazed that at the end of it is, you know, the, 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 the actual result. And then they always ask us the same question. Everything is, you know, you, you, you took it here from Malaysia. It's like, yeah, you know, every single thing um, is nicely packed or in sequence. It's almost like an army going out, you know, and uh, set up the booth and then tear down and come back. And, um, so I think all these uh, type of learning, especially on the part of the technical skills, um, that is one of the major advantage of uh, being a, you know, when you compete in the competition, that is your takeaway. That is the, the most uh, positive outcome that we see. Um, apart from that is, of course, like I say, the networking. Um, when they are abroad, um, either in the Philippines or in Taiwan, you know, they get to see um, a lot of the key industry players, regional key industry, uh, because they are invited as judges. And then, you know, during those times, uh, the students will realize the high standard, you know, that uh, the school is trying to put in. Uh, they may not understand when, when we are in class, but once you're in a competition, uh, you know that, you know, that is the industry standard that you have to achieve. And the whole realization uh, make them, you know, um, when they come back, they are more driven uh, to be better. They will know what a, the word of a true profession or professional means, right? Um, they, so they get to network with the judges. They get to network with the peers. Okay, you can you can uh, make friends with a lot of students from other participating universities. Then you realize your competition, you know, you realize that these are the people who are graduating and also grabbing jobs regionally. Uh, so therefore I have to be better or I have to really work hard, you know. Uh, so like I say, when they come back, you know, you, you can see that they're so driven. 
are so motivated and sometimes you know they they, they become so passionate um, about the industry that you know for me that 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 is wonderful to see and and we are so proud um, any questions from the crowd um, it's very difficult and funny and weird to be you know talking on my own no question at all okay thank you Dee. that was really encouraging um, okay, um, I guess um, um, maybe we could, uh, I could share a bit about our, the results. Uh, okay, there's no point saying that, you know, how, uh, okay, there's a question here, thank you. Um, can I see that again? Okay. Um, what makes learning at BUC different? Um, okay, um, learning at BUC um, is very practical and very hands-on. Um, that is why I think uh, we can prepare our students very well. Um, we The first semester, what we do is we give them a solid foundation in their theory. So first semester, first semester normally they, you know, very very little practical but from the second semester onwards we will build them up on their practical skills um, because once you have a solid foundation in your theory um, you need to first understand your theory and then you can you know do your practical very well um, it doesn't mean that from practical that you know you just become very operational uh, but in our industry, we first need to know about operation before you can move on to comfortably move on to management. Uh, because a lot of the times, uh, operations issues are very critical. But once you have the experience, uh, practical experience, and know uh, all the operation operational uh, aspects of things, it's easy for you to then manage. Uh, you will understand a lot more. So I would say our um, Im immersion that we do with the student, uh, that we actually uh, don't just uh, think about uh, immersing them into um, theory, but we definitely immerse them a lot into practical. Um, so when students get involved in practical, they, they then understand they can connect the theory much more easier than, for example, if you tell them that, you know, you need to do a site inspection uh, for a venue before you uh, before you actually conduct uh, or before you actually do an event. Um, in a class, in a theory class, that word site inspection does not really mean a lot to them. Um, you can give them the whole list of uh, site inspection but if they do not know how to prepare for it uh, or actually know what to look for in a site inspection, um, then, you know, um, it's basically quite useless. Uh, so, for example, going back to the competition, um, giving you an example, let's say, for example, Langkawi. Uh, once we decided on Langkawi, the next step we did was to do a site inspection um, of Langkawi or the uh, meeting venue, the accommodations, the attractions. Um, so before the students go there, they have to actually draw up a, a list of what they want to look for, uh, what is it they want to see, and, up, and then we will have a schedule and then we go around to see and talk to the people, this interview people, to really dig deep down, you know, because all those people there have a lot of local knowledge of the tourism offerings of the tour local tourism market certain things that you will not find in the internet or in books even. So that kind of learning is very immersive. They really, uh, you know, dive really deep into that topic itself. Um, and those students who did Langkawi or Penang or Sabah or Sarawak or even Future Food, they will never forget, you know. And the skills that they actually uh, uh, develop through all these practical uh, aspects it will it will be embedded in them so every time they come uh, when they approach a new project they already know what to do they already know how to start 
Uh, so those uh, our graduates when when they um, when they go and look for jobs, um, normally uh, people will see the difference. People would see that you know they have a lot more uh, technical knowledge uh, about the industry, about um, the know-how of uh, uh, events and tourism. Um, any more question? Is it okay if I ask our participants to uh, share? Is that okay, uh, Ezran? Oh, yes. Um, okay, um, maybe we should... Yeah, that's okay, okay. Um, shall we start with Jolene? All the way from Singapore. I hope she's not away. Um. Uh, hi, hi everyone. <laughs> uh, hi, Jolene. Hi, hi everyone. I hope everyone is doing well there. Okay, uh, thanks for joining the sessions. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for your support. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you can um, relate um, what are your um, learning through the competition, you know, uh, since you are seriously uh, a, a live case for us, a live example. Uh, experience, right? Um, yeah. uh, what, did, what do you learn from the competition? And I mean, mainly all was picked by my Miss Kid already, which uh, student must have the very initiative and motivation to learn. And from there, like most important time arrangement as well, what mentioned by Miss Kid, <laughs> uh, initiative very important. Again, yeah, again, initiative. Uh, and another thing is the willing of the explore and curiosity that you need. That you, you have to go beyond from your... Uh, usual comfort zone because normally in what we do in college we just learn from class we learn from lecturers and we learn from theories but uh participating in this competition will be very very different which you actually go beyond in the boxes which you can actually experience things that you haven't experienced in the class yet which that's a very very good point for students in such uh, opportunity and you will meet Things that, so for example, I uh, mentioned by Miss Kate was those competition such as uh, Africa and as well as my uh, Taiwan destinations. Uh, both things are very different, but hence it still brings different, uh, brings students to go beyond their uh, learnings, uh, pushes us to push us to another zone, I mean, to out of our own uh, comfort to learn new things that we haven't actually really made yet. But in yet, these such things that what you learn is actually bring to your real life. Like what Miss Kim mentioned, after you have finished your study, you go for looking for hunting a job. And when you say such thing, right, it's actually a bonus point for you, which your future employee, employee will very, very impressed on that. So yeah, I think that's my experience. <laughs> Thank you, Jolene. Okay, um, I think from there you can very clearly see that, you know, after the competition, um, the stu our students still have a great sense of pride about what they've done. Um, and like what Jolene rightly say, it really, you know, uh, speaks volumes for your CV. Um, because, you know, if you put there, I am part of a winning team or I am the leader of the winning team, um, the, it is, the, the employer knows that, oh, uh, okay, uh, this person already trained in being a leader, already trained in knowing what to do. So um, they are more assured when they hire you. Um, and uh, I can share with you guys that uh, a lot of our students, even before they graduate, uh, some employees actually go through the some of the uh, video that we um, post on the net. And from there, they try to look for the student email address and connect with the student and so that when immediately when they graduate they they are offered jobs uh so these are all um added advantage uh not the main of course uh you know uh, of learn of the competition but uh, i would say all this added advantage um and when you go for your interview you know because you are so proud of your achievement your team's achievement you are so confident going into the uh the interview 
and uh, you will have a lot of things to say. Uh, but if, let's say, you know, you, you only uh, go through your whole two-year, three-year program by just studying, you know, although, yes, you're getting your A's and your CGPA is very good, but what the employee uh, employer is now looking for is a, a person that can straight away jump into the job and start doing. And the competition gives you that kind of platform to practice your skills, you know, and at a regional level to compete and win means your skills, you know, you, there's a testimony that your, your what you learn is of industry standard. So that, that speaks volume right um in terms of um, um you know getting you ahead of the game if you like um any more questions okay let's um get another person to share maybe um mr aaron would you oh, like yeah. to share uh, um how is it like being a coach to, mm. to um, two in, yeah. ah, okay. Uh, in terms of the experience that they can get through the competition, uh, I think most important is the exposure that they get. Um, of course, the things that Miss Kate have mentioned, that's apply as well. Of, um, like I mentioned, the exposure and the meetup with the industrial player is definitely one of the key thing at uh, the current trend in industry there's no longer doing all those sales you need a very good network in events you are not only looking at your client you also need to have a very good support from your supplier that's where when you are doing this competition you get to know the venue you get to know what's your resources where is it coming from when you do your research is the source coming out from it is it reliable that's where the students need to uh, do a very in-depth research and do a analysis on that uh, of course during the competition both in malaysia and in philippines i believe more, the students also get to know some of the students from other universities. And the good thing is they can get to see what other competitors are doing, whether is it good, is it not good, then you have to compare yourself and with a competitor. Another good thing about the competition is you are getting feedback, a reliable feedback from the industrial player. All these judges are coming from the event industry and some of it are very experienced. Of course, when they give the feedback to you, you need to evaluate from yourself. Uh, from the BMEAC, BMAC, the competition, we are competing within Malaysia. After we have shortlisted, then we proceed to Philippines, Africa, which is the international platform. That's where they can even reach out to a better, wider exposure where they are competing with other countries, total of 20 universities. Uh, of course, from there, they get to know new friends. Uh, I believe Divan can agree with me. You, you get to know some of the Indonesian university students. And yeah, so that exposure, you can never get in a classroom setting. You can only can get through all this competition. And of course, all this competition will open up to all the students. And I believe we're, go we're going through the audition to select some of the students to be the to be selected to jo join this competition. Um, another thing is all these skills and the technique that you learn throughout this competition. I believe it will be very useful for you when you are going out for uh, to work. Uh, some of it like the technical skill, like how do you identify the sound and light system, the soft skill of a negotiating and making simple as making appointment with your suppliers, all this you learn and it is very effective when you are going out to work. 
Mm, I believe that's all for the for my side of the sharing. Mm, anything to add? Okay. Um. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, thank you for your input. Um, I I would also like to add that um, in Berjaya, I, I think we do things um, slightly differently in the sense that because of our experience uh, with the MICE Taiwan competition, um, we almost have like a, um, a very good system uh, in tackling uh, this uh, competition. Um, but of course, each student are different. You know, each one will have their strong points and weaknesses. But um, that is where the training comes in. Uh, that is where we identify uh, where your strong point is. So we will put you probably in charge of that particular department. But does not mean that we will ignore um, your other weaknesses. So let's say if you're not so good in your presentation skills, so that is a good platform for you to start learning. Because after all, you are in school, right? Um, it doesn't matter how many times you fall because there's still a safety net. The school is always there to guide, to encourage, uh, to push. But if you don't learn all these skills and then you go out into the industry, that is actually, it will be a very painful lesson. Uh, like, for example, if you were to present in front of your client and, you know, your presentation is very messy and all that, um, you will not get a job. Yeah, sorry, you will not get that event, right? Uh, so that is maybe a very high price to pay. Uh, but, you know, uh, this training uh, of uh, the, the training is the learning. Those kind of learning, um, I would say um, in Brajaya, we, we really take a lot of importance on that um, because we really want to see the students succeed um, and grow. Um, that is, you know, the whole point of doing this. Um, I must say, when we started the journey uh, at MICE, uh, Taiwan MICE competition, uh, when the letter came to us to ask us to send a team to compete, um, we were like very skeptical, very anxious, um, very scared, because no one has actually, you know, uh, participated, participated in a MICE destination marketing competition before. What are we supposed to do? You know, of course, we know it would be some sort of like a bidding. Uh, but to train the student, how do we train? So there was a lot of uh, try and error. Um, but throughout the years, we actually put in a system. Um, and I would say, you know, the, but the, the student actually uh, put in a lot of input. They are very proud of their own achievement and they are really the stars, you know. Um, and together with the student, the, the whole system, uh, we, we actually developed the whole system to, to support um, those people that is, uh, partic uh, those students that participate in the competition. So I guess because of that, um, the um, rate of success is better. Um, I wouldn't say it's 100% because in a competition, you never know, you know, but Sometimes it's not the winning, you know. Um, it's the fact that you participate. It's the fact that you go through the learning curve, um, especially for the students. Um, that is the most important, that you take, you know, if you um, take on the, the whole process, you learn the whole process of it, you understood what the requirement of the industry, you um, develop your passion. Those are, I would say, a, a more a better rewards take home a positive outcome that we want to see um, and winning as i always say is the icing on the top you know is the bonus is the bonus um the fact that you know um we send a team over and we try our best and we did everything i think that is a lot more um impressive um and um encouraging you know than 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 winning okay winning is good of course um because you know nobody like to go on the competition and think that we will not win isn't it um you know it's always uh, we always want to make sure that we do uh, but the journey you know um could be tough uh, but um we can prove that you know uh from from our experience that you know um it's tough but it's worth it 
maybe we can and uh, we can uh, get help from the barn to actually talk about how he improved and actually got the award of best presenter. D? Uh, yep, I'm here. I'm here. Can you share uh -huh. some thoughts uh, without moving? <laughs> okay. Um, like my experience, well, it was the roller coaster ride for me. Like, like yeah, but I first ran away from the first audition, so that explains everything. <laughs> but then I was caught, and then had to go to audition again. I was judged by one of our seniors and stuff, so I got some feedbacks on how to improve, and I worked on it. So going through FLB was another journey where I have to improve a lot, and that was like my first time we joining joining a competition and bidding. So we had a tough time memorizing the whole script and then presenting it was another thing. So, but it was all right, but that was just the beginning. FLD was like just the surface. Once we went to Africa, then we have to like really upgrade ourselves to a whole new level to really showcase ourselves one of the best in this competition. So we got a lot of help from Toastmasters, Ms. Kid, Mr. Aaron, and even our seniors. So yeah, it was a good experience. So. It went well, so, and we do have to have faith. That's another thing. So yeah, I was not really faithful. Like I was not really believing in myself until a certain point, but once I've crossed that one, so I had really believed in myself and just did my best and then I got it. So it was really good to get something. Okay, since then, are you thinking? Since then, how, how, how did it change you? Since then, uh, I began to trust my work even more. Like I have to have more faith in myself and, and it also developed to have faith in my teammates as well, not, uh, not uh, just in case of competition, but even my classmates and other group, other assignments, group works, or even my production recently. So it really developed myself into a better leader, I believe so. Okay, thank you, Dee. Um, just maybe a quick, quick one um, from Tio and then from Mr. Ban before we actually close off. Thank you, Dee. Uh, Tio, can you just very quickly uh, tell us what, are, what do you think is the uh, best thing that happened to you in the competition? Tio, you there? I can see your okay can um okay so uh, he's a little bit busy I guess so Ban maybe perhaps um okay his mic got problem okay Ban perhaps you can uh share with us you know your greatest joy in leading the competition uh in uh, 2018 Fun. Okay. Hi, I hope that you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> mm. When talking about competitions from the lecturer perspective, we are always get very excited. So once we receive the email, which means the invitations from the party, then we, we will start to roll. Oy. Okay, what is happening next? Or those we already have the plan in our mind, how we are going to run through all the things. But however, we are still very excited. Then if you're talking about the joy, definitely is the moment whereby they announce for the winner part. That's definitely the greatest. And then if you're talking about second greatest joy is how the student change, which means uh, before competitions and then after competitions, and then followed by the, the link to the industry, and then how they contribute to the industry. This is what we love to see the most. 
because as easy as an educator, we, we just wish everything will grow up. Like you plant a seed, you need to watering, you need to put some fertilizer, all, all the things in. But um, definitely if you talk about joy, we also have some sad lah, okay? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That one is uh, another session, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, we, we can see our student develop in terms of not only the soft skills and also the hard skills. It, because we, we couldn't imagine that eh, it can be done in that way, but by the end of the day, eh, it, can, it can come out. Like example of the uh, booth de decoration for last year, we also never imagined that uh, the dazzling Langkawi, the words, yeah, can we come with the light, then uh, do, do make the effort and then with some of the uh, assistance from the artists and then yeah, come up with a very amazing lighting with people go and visit the booth and then they, the first sight, they will be attracted with the light. So you can see it's on off the pool, pool and fat factor is all in already. And for the joy, it's not only for the growth of students, it's also <laughs> ourselves as well, <laughs> because we also uh, experience quite a lot. Yeah. Yes, um, thank you, Ban. Um, I must concur with him. Um, I think through the students, we also learn, we also increase our own knowledge um, apart from guiding. Uh, you know, there are certain techniques, but when it comes to uh, some technical knowledge, because, you know, in events and tourism, things are moving and changing so fast that uh, you will always constantly need to keep yourself updated and uh, be relevant, you see. The other point that uh, Mr. Ban brought up is uh, very good, is uh, innovation. Um, because we are, you know, last, uh, in 2019, um, we know that the past three years, we were the champion before. So how do we actually, you know, um, can innovate in a sense that can outdo ourselves to get back the 29, you know, to get the, the title back in 2019? That is our biggest challenge. Um, we are our own worst enemy. So we have to compete with ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to raise the bar, um, to ensure that you know we can get it. So that kind of fighting spirits is again something that you cannot stimulate in class, but you know, for the student to have it in them to 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 go and get grab, you know, the the, the award, um, that I think again is a, a priceless learning experience you know, that can only happen in competition. Um, okay, Tio, are you, are you, is your mic okay? Can you maybe give me a very quick uh, uh, sharing on what is the, what do you think is the best thing that happened to you through the competition? Hello, Miss. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, okay, I think I believe all the advantage I benefit uh, through the competition that student will get uh miss and my friend Jorin, sir, they all share already. But to me, another thing that uh no one mentioned is the how you keep the passion in this envi environment. Because of course we will we will develop our leadership, uh, all the good things we will we will gain throughout uh, the competition. But during this process it's not easy as what you think, what you imagine, and when you when you really step in and you you realize the process is not what you imagine, it's not what you think, and people start to quit, want to quit, and they feel this motivate, and this is the more important part that how you keep this motivate uh, motivation and the passion throughout the process because we are in this environment, we all have to know that all the result, all the prizes will be paid at the end, not, not the mid, middle part. So you have to keep this passion until and you have to 
keep moving, keep moving until the end. Only you will get all these, the thing that Miss mentioned and Jolly mentioned or Mr. Ban mentioned. So for me, it's how you keep your uh, passion and how you deal with all the pressure, obstacles. Then throughout this journey, then you will get everything through the competition because how you deal with your team teammate and this thing automatically will uh, get this at the end of the day. Yeah, this, I think this this for me. Thank you, Tio. Um, I think we have a lot of live testament today. Um, and certainly um, all those that are, you know, the students here are gone through the whole learning curve and come out as, you know, champions in their own right. Um, I'm going I'm closing the session soon, but I see that there are other participants um, in this uh, Google Hangout session. Are there any uh, questions from other participants? I guess none. <laughs> okay, um, with that, um, sincerely thank you um, for you guys, for your support and for joining this session. Um, I'm not sure whether um, you know you guys enjoyed the session as much as I did. Um, this is certainly something new for me. I've never done this before. Um, but of course, moving on, um, online is, uh, you know, this kind of uh, meeting up online is going to be a regular, if not a normal feature. This will be the new normal. And um, oh, before I go, I would like to say some of you or those uh, listening might be wondering, hey, you know, we have a very major uh, crisis that the whole country or even the world is experiencing. And what, is, what, is that, what, what does that mean for your industry? Now, I believe in our industry. Our industry is very resilient and very, very strong and very innovative. Um, if you meet a whole bunch of uh, events and tourism people, you will be amazed on how you know positive they are. They're the most positive person that you can ever come across. Um, because we're always constantly faced with challenge, I guess that's why we are so positive. And so I believe that you know um, when this period, when we tie over, okay, um, we will come up even stronger because it is a trying time. Um, but once all this has gone through and you know um they will it will be you know the challenge is a is a very challenging phase or situation but we can always make something out of this and you know like for like for example now we never thought of google hangout until now so that may be a new thing a new feature uh, that all of us just have to adapt and um you know, um, and enjoy this kind of uh, new ways of communicating. Okay, thank you all for joining. I think I can close my session now. <laughs> it is very, very nice to see you guys, especially Jolene all the way from Singapore and uh, Tio, who is uh, taking time off from working to actually join. Um, and all of you, um, I'm sure you, uh, you know, Okay, thank you.